So I want to welcome everyone uh, today who's come to, to hear about the data-driven law firm. I'm Dr. Kane Elliott. I'm the head legal futurist over here at Fileline, um, and I'm joined by Josh Hostillo, who's the director of business development and intakes. Um, we're going to go through today and talk about some of the experience that Josh and his team have had that he uh, personally led in bringing his team onto Filevine, what they do to optimize and give them give him a chance to, to talk about what he thinks he's done to improve what's going on at the firm um, and how that process has gone so far. And then hopefully I'll get to ask him some questions about what he wants to be doing in the future to get even better. Um, so Josh, I'll let, I'll let you take it away and go ahead and introduce uh, yourself and, and the firm and move from there. Yeah, thanks, Kane. Um, so I'm Josh Hostelow, uh, as Kane said, Director of Business Development Intakes. Uh, my job over the years has has evolved and changed as, uh, as we've grown as a firm, but uh, end all of what we're trying to do is continue to grow year over year. Um, with the implementation of Filevine, I believe we've done that and uh, for the last year and, and we continue to find ways to grow. Um, our law firm is uh, Southeast United States based. Um, we are in Alabama, uh, Georgia, and South Carolina, and um, we're a personal injury uh, mass volume law firm. Um, we'll talk about some things today that are, you know, some what, how we manage our day-to-day -day practice, but additionally how we make decisions on um, marketing, um, how many cases each case manager should handle, um, all the way down to what our growth opportunities are and where we're looking to grow in the future. Um, we are, we started in 2007. Um, the law firm grew from 2007 to 2016 from one to six offices. Um, and now we are at 13 since uh, 2016. We uh, manage actively 4,500 to 5,000 clients uh, between our 13 offices. Um, we do have 22 lawyers on staff and we are across three different states. Um, we have 87 team members um, across all of our offices and we really occupy five uh, DMAs or designated market areas throughout those three states. Uh, Josh, sorry, I just want to ask you a quick question based yeah. on that. You, The three states, you said you included was that so Georgia and Alabama as well in South Carolina yeah in South yeah. Carolina no you just told me you guys are I see the the Bulldogs we just talked about this you guys are playing Alabama is that this weekend that is correct so the SEC you have, is there any in, in office fighting going or what yeah so the office I actively sit in um our attorney is an Alabama fan so um we definitely have some uh some inner office uh animosity going this okay. week uh, some trash talking and um you know they are good sports my birthday was this month or this past month and they uh hung some georgia stuff around the office so at least i didn't get clobbered with alabama things okay i just want to make sure just... definitely um so you know again um i'll talk about our journey you know the biggest thing was for us is that we got to a point in our law firm where manpower was consistently growing um we had a lot of duplicative jobs and we were looking for a way to uh, decrease a lot of things. One of them was burnout. And in the personal injury world, we see a lot of that turnover, burnout, whether it's a case manager, attorney, or just anybody in the law firm. And because it is a lot of cases and it is a lot of uh, difficult times within cases. And so we were looking for a way to really focus on making sure that our employees were happy um, because at the end of the day, if your employees are happy, they take care of your clients and you can sit, consistently put a good product on the table. Um, so it started about three years ago. Um, we set out on a journey to make it uh, more efficient. Um, so we wanted to decrease burnout, but we also wanted to increase a lot of things within our law firm. Um, how quickly we handled a case, you know, uh, how many cases should we handle per attorney, per case manager, per team member that's handling on the accounting side and really make sure that that uh, drives forward, um, you know, the profits of the firm and making sure that uh, at the end of the day, we still put employees in front of profit, you know, and, and how can we make employees happy, uh, but also 
be in a growth mindset every day. Um, so we knew that we had, we were a little late on the e-signature function um, for our clients or potential clients. And so we went with an e-signature company and um, that just kind of led to that next step of saying, what else is out there from a case management practice standpoint? How can we, we have this ability to sign a client really fast, you know, send it to their cell phone, they sign it, they send it back. And then it takes us, you know, an hour to get it in the system, you know, or, or we have somebody manually setting these things up. And so what we looked for was uh, a, a technology that would integrate with many platforms, but also we are able to track every step of the way and make sure that we that nothing falls through the crack. Um, I just listened to a, the podcast the other day with, with Ryan Anderson on it from Filevine. He talked about a lot of the attorneys, the biggest worry is something fell through the crack. Well, we didn't want that to ever happen. And so we wanted to start looking at technologies that would make sure that those things don't happen in our law firm. Um, so again, it all started with a Nissan and it led us to, you know, question where we were as a firm. We had a lot of spreadsheets. We had a lot of manual labor of people creating spreadsheets and pivot tables and all these wonderful things that were probably great in the early 2000s and in the 1990s. And we just had not, we had not caught up and it took hours to get answers to questions that should take minutes um, to make real-time decisions. And so we started looking and, and like I said, we, we looked at five different platforms. Um, you know, it was our current system was Needles um, that we we're on. So of course, Needles was trying to evolve at the same time. So we did look at their platform. Um, Needles Neos was, was an option when we went in there and, and we wanted to make sure we vetted all options. Um, some of the things that, you know, I think we as a firm looked for in what we wanted to move forward with um, were just real-time analytics. You know, we, we, are, we are marketing. We do a lot of marketing for a law firm and, you know, how can we make a real-time decision with marketing if it takes us an hour with a spreadsheet and somebody analyzing that to make a decision? Um, and we and we make we make changes in our in our marketing daily. Um, so it's one of those things where you just want to make sure that we, you know, get to that point where how can I have every answer in this law firm on, you know, in the palm of my hand in a mobile device? Um, and with with Falvon, we found that. We asked a lot of questions with Falvon. Um, we asked a lot of questions of where they were going in the future. Were they going to be available to support the growth that we were looking for? Um, because at the time, and, and Kane, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Falvon was a smaller was a smaller company three years ago. Um, and you know now, of course, it's as robust as the, the I guess the 400 plus employees that they have now. But we wanted to make sure that the growth mindset was on both sides of the table. It wasn't just on our side. Um, and so that was a big, that was a big deciding factor for us. And, and I will say, I mean, I think, uh, I think with Falvon, they came in with, uh, with all the, all the big horses. I know that Ryan traveled all the way to Savannah to come and see us and, and make sure that we were on board and we made sure this would happen. And, you know, so it took, it took some time for us to make that decision. Um, but it's the it's honestly been the best decision we've made um, in the in the past three years to move to a, a new platform and a better platform, um, you know. And then, and the next thing was connectivity. So as the digital world continues to evolve, we want to make sure that we are evolving with it and being faster and more efficient. And so we looked at all the APIs and and how Falvon was going to create continue to create an open API platform for other. Um, sources to connect in. And so, you know, we looked at a lot of that and said, well, how, you know, how can we consistently grow um, with our other platforms? And because I, I, we wanted our team members to never leave the system. We wanted to make sure that everything they did was always in one system. Previous, we had five different systems. They had, you know, things they were having to jump between to get, to get different things done. And now it's, you know, now it's all in one. We're pushing uh, data from one from one location to another, and we're pushing in new cases from our lead generation site and things like that. So we're making sure that everything is connected, and we've got some things in the future coming. But um, you know, I'll talk about those a little bit, and I'll you know a little bit later in the in the slides. But this is something where we immediately saw the difference in the way that we handle our cases. Um, so why Falvon? 
right? I think that's a question for a lot of people. Um, there's many case, case management platforms out there. Um, so the biggest thing was managing our team. So as I said earlier, burnout is a big, big problem within the legal world, um, especially in personal injury. And it's just an overload of cases with clients that can, that can be very cumbersome at times and need a lot of help. And so with us, we're able to manage hour by hour um, analytics um, within our teams. So we, had, we know from attorneys to case managers, all the way down to assistant case managers on how many cases that they're dealing with on an hour by hour basis and how many tasks they're actually completing um, in those things. And that helps us with being able to see in real time, you know, if a, if a team member's falling behind, sometimes you don't know that until it's too late. And with this, we're able to, to really track that. And we have a case compliance team that, that really follows up on this. And we, we're always there to train and retrain our team members to make sure that we continue to push that forward. Well, and Josh, I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to note something on that front, because one, one thing that I think makes your firm interesting that you've been doing that I've seen a lot more of since the pandemic hit um, and has been interesting to me is watching legal teams diversify the kinds of teams and setups they have. Um, there were a lot of firms where it was unthinkable that you had something other than partners with a million different committees they were on that were handling each of these things. The committee, suppose, everybody loves committee duty, right? And Go then, ahead. and then you know, then there was associates, your paralegals, your legal support staff. I noticed that you guys, you've mentioned several times here and in your slides about the case quality and compliance team. Um, and you hit on something really important, which I thought was the training component which I'm kind of obsessive about that. Uh, I think digital transformation, I always tell people that's something that never gets to stop once you start. It's a continual process. It's an unending conversation that keeps going and going. And I'm wondering um, when you mentioned those teams, what do you do for, for training um, when other people are thinking about their own digital transformations, changes you're, they're making, whether they're moving to new case management platform or they're just gonna use the platform, I know we have Fileline users on today who are thinking about different use cases. What do you guys do about training? How often do you do that? If you could shed any insight on that. Yeah, definitely. So our case quality and compliance team actually manages every task within Fileline. Um, and we have them set up on parameters on when things are done or when they're supposed to be done. And we have them in a 24 hour variant. So if a task goes undone um, that is supposed to be completed, Every 24 hours when those things aren't done, our team gets an automatic alert, um, our case quality and compliance team, an automatic alert to find out what's going on in that case. Is somebody off for the day? Because that could be a reason why something didn't get done. And so from a training perspective with us, we make sure that we train and retrain. We actually have monthly training sessions with our case managers. We have monthly attorney meetings where the attorneys are introduced to different things, maybe issues they'd had in the previous month. Um, and we also challenge them to bring some issues of their own to the table so that we could, you know, round table those things within the training sessions. Um, Cause not everybody may have the same problem, but a lot of people, you know, they may have that same issue down the road. And sometimes we introduce those things to fix those. So from a training perspective, we try to train uh, with our case, our, um, our case quality and compliance team does that with the um, with the case managers monthly, and then the attorneys uh, typically are the first Friday of every month have some type of training. So um, it's a big component, and it's changed our law firm. It's changed the way that our teams work together because um, we are spread out. We're, I mean, yeah. again, we have 13 offices, and we're spread across three states. You know, they have the camaraderie to talk to each other from across different offices. Um, to be able to work on some of those consistent goals to make sure that the whole law firm as a whole is competing to, to be the first and the best of what we are. And so the training aspect has changed what we've done. And it really took off when, when we launched Filevine and, and because we created a team for this as well, we wanted to make sure that case quality and compliance team had the ability to continue to manage these things because the alerts are so easy to set up that it's something where our whole team can just be all over it. As soon as they, you know, miss an alert or somebody's out for a day, we make sure those things are done. Um, so yeah, no, it's been it's been big. Training's always going to be. I think again, we never want an employee to walk away that we fail. Um, you give that opportunity to the employee as many times as you can, um, and and make sure that you've done everything you can to make that team member uh, as successful as you can inside your law firm. 
Okay. So, you know, and then it led to integration with tech products. So um, a lot of times with marketing, you spend a bunch of money in one marketing area and how do you know if it works? Um, with us, we had that same problem. Um, we market a lot on television. We, we market digitally, uh, radio, billboard, you know, pretty much anywhere you can find a, an advertisement, we're, we're there. You know, and we were just like, hey, you know, it works because we're bringing in all these cases. But now that we're getting to the age where we want to know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. And so we um, we signed on with Lead Docket um, to be able to integrate with all of our marketing sources. Um, and we want to know, you know, with us, it was now we're starting to see the web forms roll in and where they're coming from, the phone calls, because we also integrated with CallRail. So we have CallRail plugged in. And we can see what markets they're calling. Did we convert on these cases? How did we convert? How much did that cost us with our Google integration? All of those things really tell us where, what's working best for the law firm. And two years ago, we would have never known that. Um, and so that's something where we all have always asked those questions. Um, we also, in Falvon, have a marketing section built out um, for our case managers um, to ask questions about, you know, just simple, simple demographics about a client. What type of television do you watch? You know, do you stream things like that? Because we want to know, should we be advertising, you know, in, in other ways and OTT and things like that. So um, we look at those, those opportunities with the integrations that we've been able to put together with, with lead docket, with call rail and, and with Falvon to be able to plug those all in together. Um, and then the phone system. So we, we moved over to ring central, um, in May of this year, uh, we just launched the Ring Central uh, plugin that just actually I think went live last week, um, yep. and it's the call log. And now we're able to see when a current client has called. If it was a missed call, it creates a task in the in the file. And we're not having to go through these things where the, our internal call center is having to reach out to people. Hey, this client called. Hey, this client called. Those things can be missed sometimes. This tells us everything. It puts it in the system. Who are they calling for? There's a missed call. And that's that's been a great, you know, a great integration for us. And we've already seen, you know, some of those things down the road that we were have we always wanted in the system. And they've been like dreams of ours. And now all of a sudden they're here. Um, and then the last thing that that was actually right in the first part of us, you know, going in with Alvin was the integration with Fuel Digital and QuickBooks. Um, so we use a QuickBooks that is offline. Um, and when we, when we came into Falbon, there was really no connector. There was no way for that to connect. And so with working with Fuel Digital, we were able to help with uh, just showing them how we work through that. And um, I know it's been a great, great thing for us to have a staging area and be able to really see those differences. And um, so, you know, I think that that's something that was huge for us is, you know, we were able to kind of view those. And if there's errors with matching up with QuickBooks, we see all of that immediately. Um, and our team, I mean, again, we batch quite a bit of checks all at one time. And, and it's been a, it's been a great integration. Um, and, I, and when I was in legal X, we were able to, to meet with the team from fuel and, and know that it's been a successful integration with a lot of different firms. Um, and then planning for the future. Uh, so using analytics um, from a newly case, you know, new cases coming in the door. Again, we have a marketing budget. We want to know how do we plan that marketing budget for the next month, for the next year, um, we set a budget every year, but we want to know, do we have growth opportunities in certain markets? Um, if this market is doing better, do we spend more to see if it brings in more? How does this, you know, how does this all affect us? Um, so those are things, you know, with the integrations, um, we're able to, you know, see the, the new cases coming in the door in real time. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but the Domo Periscope integration is something where uh, it actually alerts me every hour on the hour how many cases came in in that previous hour and um, how many we have for the month. Um, I can also project for that day or week or month and, and kind of see where we are and where we're going. And then if we start to see decreases and, and alerts, we have alerts set up when we drop below certain numbers. And that helps us with our marketing team being able to adjust some things, whether it's digitally or, or on the television. Um, to make sure that those things are, are properly pushing in the right direction. Um, and then rejections and fires. So I will tell you, so rejection rate is something that's kind of unavoidable um, in the personal injury world because a lot of cases are being signed very fast. 
Um, sometimes their accident reports are, are available the day after you sign them. Sometimes they're not available. You're having to go off a client's word. And, um, you know, again, at the same time, you know, you may have to say, hey, there's no coverage in this case. There's nowhere that we're going to be able to have coverage. Client doesn't have it. You know, the, the alpha party didn't have it. And so we have to reject some cases. I will say that our cases that we've been let go on or fired on or, hey, you know, this client wasn't happy with the service has gone down 70 percent year over year. Um, and that's all with being able to take care of these cases in a more timely fashion. Uh, having those weekly updates with the client um, and the ability to, you know, we've we've been able to drive our attorney fee up uh, pretty high. Um, that's in the slide coming up, but I will, you know, talk about how we can base this off firm financials and uh, know how what we're looking for and the percentages that we're trying to increase in each one of our markets. Yeah, let's hit those numbers, Josh. Yep. So since January, um, our overall attorney fee is up $600 per case. Um, our headcount uh, has went down from 97 team members to 87 team members. A lot of that was duplicative tasks and duplicative roles that we had within the firm. Uh, when you're running manual spreadsheets and you're running a manual system, uh, you have a lot of jobs that are created because, you know, you just, you need it. You need it when you have that. But when you have things that are being automatically tasked or automatically generated within the system, a lot of those jobs you're able to be a little more efficient in. And so that was something that, you know, we set out on a goal to really be efficient in our law firm. And, and we had some really great team members, but at the end of the day, um, it's a business and law and we want to make sure that we continue to, to drive this law firm forward. Um, average, we're averaging about 600,000 actions per month. What that means is when people are in Filevine and they're clicking on things and they're completing tasks and viewing documents, um, you know, and, and making sure, you know, things have been done in a timely fashion, in a proper fashion. Our team members, we have 87 of them now, are moving really fast and they're moving at a very efficient rate. And as we can see, I mean, we've drove up attorney fee by $600 this year already, and we've managed to really, really work in the right direction. Um, and our demand quality has gone up. So when you have a document management system like Falvon in the folder format that we've been able to create, our team members are able to see property damage photos immediately. They're able to, you know, see, you know, exactly where to go to find the documentation they're looking for. Um, and, and our quality has gone up on our work. Um, the, the case managers, the attorneys, they're able to write better demands. Um, they're able to have more information at their fingertips and, you know, as quickly as possible. So that's some of the things that, that have driven up what we have. And then, as I said earlier, we built, built a case quality and compliance team to monitor the analytics within the firm. So daily, I mean, that is their only job is they're running the Falvine reports. They're looking through Domo to look at the case, uh, you know, the case allocation between attorney, case manager. Um, so those are some of the things that they, they do. And then they also create the training and where we need the training the most. And so this kind of leads us to the client experience. Um, so we have an input coordinator. Um, he manages the inventory daily. And what he does is he makes sure that everything that when we sign those clients, that everything that the client provided to us, whether it's a phone number all the way down to a copy of a hospital record is in that file and it's in the proper location. Um, and he makes, you know, he makes sure that when he's allocating that team, so we have we have a team for, for every part of the process, but he's allocating that team to make sure that they're in their right threshold of how many cases they should have. Um, we have block numbers. So basically once it gets to a certain number, hey, we're moving this case to the next team as it's signed and coming in the door. Um, so we make sure that, that everybody is at an efficient number that works for them. Um, the client uh, expediency is key, right? So the first, a lot of times, the first question that's asked is, well, how long is this case gonna take? Um, and, and I think the answer for us is always, it all depends on you know, your treatment. We wanna make sure that you're better. We wanna make sure that you're you know, healthy at the end of this. So we call our clients 24 hours within signing the client for an introduction call um, from the team. And they're gonna, they're gonna know who their team is and they're gonna know, you know who to contact as their first point of contact and who their attorney is that's gonna be working on that team. 
Um, after the initial call, we actually schedule a seven day call with a task in Falbon. So that task, it actually goes through the whole treatment stage of the case every seven days. Um, our team members, case manager, they, you know, they make sure that that is followed up on. Even if it's a, there's nothing going on, they're just in treatment, there is an update on the client. We wanna say, hey, how are you doing? You know, we wanna make sure you're taken care of. And then we can also find out a little detail sometimes from the client as maybe they're still in some excruciating pain and maybe we need to look at, you know, furthering their treatment into a different route. So those are some of the things that we look for with case quality and compliance and making sure that we're followed up. Um, we use the text feature um, in there as well to text the client from the file. Um, now, I know, obviously, there's been some changes in the texting world with, uh, with T-Mobile, AT&T, all these wonderful mm -hmm. things, um, and upgrading those services, but we went ahead and moved forward with it. Um, it's a great opportunity for the client to text into the file and, and keep that constant thread of communication with the client. Um, I, again, it makes the client have one number and something that they're, that's tangible for them and to be able to communicate with someone in their file. Additionally, a lot of our clients don't necessarily communicate through the phone. They'd rather text. Mm -hmm. And so we like the ability to get in touch with them as fast as possible. Um, and then that kind of leads me into communication options for the client. Um, you know, I will say that, as I said, clients have the ability to text, but some clients may like to email. And so each case has its own designated email address and that allows them to send documents and, you know, and any communication that they would need to send throughout the case. And it also, with the Outlook integration, allows us to search that case directly from our Outlook inboxes. Um, so when a client or an adjuster sends these emails, we're able to then tag them into the case directly from our Outlook integration. So I'll say that's been a pretty cool feature for us because we're not having to copy emails and download them and paste them into the case and save them in the docs. So it's been a great, great thing. Um, and then one other thing that's in the works for us, we're implementing a case or a client portal that is gonna be a link on our website. It's gonna be a button on our website for our current clients to go in, and be able to access a portal for their case. Um, it's, we've just started really building it out with, uh, with a team we met at LegalX and we are going to uh, probably launch here in mid-December, but it's gonna give the client the ability to always have their case manager and attorney's numbers and contact information right there on the screen, but additionally show them where they are in the case, where they're going in the case. And we have a couple little cute little fun pop-up videos that are gonna be in there too from, from Mike Costello, our founder, and, and kind of where they are and explain the detail of where they are in their case and what's the most important step. Um, so, you know, I think again, we're just continuing to move forward into those next things. Um, so let kind know, of Josh, I, I know you're gonna take us through some KPIs yeah. here. Yeah, go, yeah, you can go ahead and go to that, but I but I did want to let everybody know who's participating. Um, we're gonna try to leave the last 10, 15 minutes for Q and A. And I know we already have one question in there, but if there are others with questions, you can start popping them in now or or wait till we start Q and A. But um We'd, we'd love to interact some, I'm sure some people participating have other questions. So just want to make sure everybody knows we're going to make sure we have some time available for that. Definitely. Um, so yeah, so we're going to go through some of the KPIs. Um, you know, based off of the marketing spend, how many cases should we be bringing in? You know, what's our average cost per acquisition, right? We always want to know those things. And, and as you, you know, want to grow your law firm, you know, what's the What's the most efficient way to spend your money? You know, what are you looking for? And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm sharing some behind the scenes data here, um, but, you know, ours is, and I can tell you, if we look at this, it's coming out of COVID. And I think I can speak for everyone on this call was not fun. Um, you know, we, we typically average somewhere between 400 to about 435 cases a month um, between all of our markets. And, you know, COVID really hurt. You know, we were able to sign a little over 3,000 for last year, but going into this year, uh, we were really, you know, amped and thought it was going to be, you know, back to normal. And as we saw, January, February, March was not back to normal. Um, and so finally in April, I think we all kind of got back on board and everybody, you know, kind of was back out in the open. Um, again, we represent personal injury victims with car accidents. So 
cars aren't on the road, very little accidents are happening. So we were able to, to kind of get back on board in April. Um, and so you can see the trends and in, in each one of these within Falbon, you know, this is a, this is the Domo Periscope integration. And um, all of this is available on my phone, on my tablet, you know, on your desktop, wherever you are, you can pull this up in real time and, and see exactly where you are. And, and there's, again, we can set alerts to be able to tell us when we're low for a day or project for the next day. But, you know, this is kind of what we look for is, you know, how are we, how are we spending our money and how many cases are coming in the door? Um, so, you know, this is a, to be able to see this in real time has been a, uh, a game changer for us, you know, before, again, manual spreadsheets, people counting them up in our call center, how many we've signed, you know, people going, you know, sending us a text, hey, I signed this client, things like that. We, we now have a central location to look at this at any time in, in real time. And then inventory count. So we talked about it earlier. Um, you know, how many cases should an attorney have? How many cases, case manager, paralegal? As we look through the process, how are we, you know, what's driving case value? What's taking care of the client? And is our employee happy? Is our team member happy here? You know, are they, are they drowning? You know, where are they? And so with the Domo integration, we also are able to keep track of that throughout the day, throughout the month. And we want to see, you know, kind of who's, who's where and where should they be? Um, you may have some more senior case managers who carry a heavier caseload, um, or they may manage lower value cases. So we, we have ways to split that up in our firm. Um, and so, you know, that's something that we watch as we, as we continue to to evolve this system and evolve our team members into to the most efficient people they can be and, and, ha and being happy team members in here as well. Um, and so then demands, right? So this is where the money comes from. Demands go out the door, attorneys are working on offers, you know, hey, we're either gonna get to an offer that the client in the law firm thinks is in best interest of the client or we're going to file the case. And so, you know, for us, it's, we look at these demand numbers and we know that most of our cases, between 45 to 47% of our cases um, in the current inventory by attorney should be settled for the month. So every first of the month, we look at the total inventory per attorney. And we know that, hey, 45 to 47% of these should be settled. What's our projection for the month? How many cases are gonna be settled by the end of the month? And then we multiply that times our average case value or attorney's fee on there. We know exactly where we should be, and we know if we're pacing above that or below that throughout the month um, to make sure that our average stays in the right realm. And Josh, know, I, I, have a, I, have, I have a question about distribution of this. Is yeah. this something that you were all of, I know you said you, have, you guys have, what, is it 22 attorneys? Yeah. Is this something that they're also on the dashboard, or are you doing like weekly or monthly meetups? What's the yeah, distribution so look like within the firm? Correct. So they actually get a report every day at about 515 that tells how many settlements throughout the whole firm. So we create a little bit of competition here, um, but they know exactly how many settlements they've done for the day. And then also it totals it for the month. Additionally, they know where their values are because they, they get a report from the team every week on how many cases they have in demand out, how many cases they have in demand prep. And as we move through the process, how many are there in general? And so with us, we make sure that weekly they are updated on when they start the week, this is how many you got. When you start the month, this is how many you have in this, this is where you should be. Um, so that's part of it. And again, they, they're every day at five o'clock, it's an automatic report that goes out to all the attorneys um, to show exactly uh, how many cases were settled and how many cases for the month that they've done as a group and additionally how, how they've done by themselves. Okay. Um, and then that kind of leads us to the, uh, the settlements. So as we talked about demands out, we talk about settlements. And so we want to look at, for us, it's, okay, where, where are we at for the month? And we watch this number pretty heavily, right? So we should know, hey, to be completely honest, the, the number that they should be going th for is about 375. And so if we get to 375, we've met like that quota for the month of what we have set, set out to meet a goal. And you know, so we watch that and every month they have an average of per day, how many they should be doing as a team, but also additionally, they know what their average should be based off of their overall inventory. 
and so that is something where we're able to project, um, you know, how much we're how much we're going to make um, down the road. But additionally, how we're going to cover the advertising and the overhead, um, because at the end of the day, you can spend a lot of money in advertising and you can bring a lot of people in. But if this isn't efficient and we're not able to continue to drive case value and settlements through the door, it's all for nothing. And so can't keep the lights sure. on. Yeah. Can't keep the lights on here. So we want to make sure that we continue to do that every day. And, and we, there's a lot of push. Our, uh, our chief legal officer pushes our attorneys every day. That five o'clock email comes out and he responds by midnight with something in there like, hey, we need to do more. or Hey, we need a great day. You know, one or the other. So there's always a push in, in, our, in our organization, no matter where you are, whether it's the front end getting cases in the door or on the back end getting cases settled and dispersed. So, yeah. Excellent. Um, I know, Josh, one of the, we're going to have uh, time for questions, and I know we've already got um, some in here. So let me let me ask you the first one we had we've gotten in from an attendee, which said, um, their question was, do you have an outside team or advisors working with you on the marketing and, and lead docket? Do you have partners um, involved with that, or is it something you're handling internally? Yeah, so um, we do have a marketing team that is on the outside. Now, technically, we work day to day with them. Like every morning at 8.45 a.m., uh, I meet with them. We go over the previous day's analytics, whether it be from cases coming in the door to conversions on Google uh, to phone volume. So we meet on that daily. We make adjustments where need to be made. Um, and we even talk about commercials that we're going to run and when we need to make sure that we're making those changes in the commercials or the rotation for the stations. So um, that is something we do work with an outside, an outside agency for. Um, and then additionally with lead docket, we do use the lead docket reports to be able to, um, to be able to make those decisions with them and just say, hey, look, you know, Google and this market is doing really well. I mean, maybe we put a little more in the, to this word or to, you know, Google keyword or ad word or whatever it may be, or hey, let's, uh, you know, this market's falling a little behind. Maybe we need to allocate some more funds into that market. Maybe there's some increased competition. You know, some of those things, there's always going to be, uh, I think, some, there's some outside competition that's always going to take a little bit of market share, and you just have to continue to prove the, your brand and, and what we've built as a company in the last uh, 14 years. Hmm. And Josh, we, we have a couple other questions that came in. Um, one of the questions was, um, do you divide your attorneys between lit and pre-lit? Or how many cases per attorney do you try to maintain between lit and pre-lit? Yeah, so, um, so litigation is its own department in our firm. Um, we actually have five attorneys in litigation. Um, and they are managing those five attorneys. They all work together on their cases. Some of them are in direct names with certain with certain attorneys, depending on the level of, of severity. Um, but those attorneys typically, you know, have anywhere from twenty to forty cases in their name. Um, and we have a couple of paralegals in the litigation department as well. Um, and then, as far as pre pre lit cases, um, our pre lit department, uh, each attorney carries, you know, roughly about 100 to, to 200 cases, but they do, it all depends on how many case managers and, and what that market supports as well. Um, the case managers uh, typically carry, you know, 100 cases each, um, and it could go higher depending on their tenure here um, and experience uh, with what we do. Okay. Um, we have a, a couple more questions about the marketing and your reporting on that. I know you're probably one of the best people who could be on to talk about this since you were so deeply involved in the setup of FileVine and, and the reporting structure that's in there. Um, one of the questions was on the reports uh, that you were showing with the KPI stats. Um, are those ones that, that, that you um, got along with Periscope or are those custom ones that you've devised and put together with the Periscope team. Um, just a general question about the the process involved. Yeah, it, it really depends on the one we're talking about. But some of them, and you can see it um, in some of the reports. But some of them have a um, have a one next to the filter. Some of them we've filtered down to where we want it to show exactly, you know, what we need it to show to whether it's caseload by case manager. Um, and for privacy reasons, we blurred a lot of the names out in there as well. But um, 
we did have some custom reports that are built into our system uh, for like attorney's fees and, um, you know, settlements um, because we've created some some things in Falvine that show all of them, whether it's UM, UIM, um, or liability, it's all coming into one report so that we can manage all of those at one time. Um, from a marketing perspective, the new cases coming in the door was a stock was a stock report within Periscope, um, and that you know again we we will we tailor that depending on the markets and things of that nature. But yeah, it's. Um, We've got, I think, seven custom ones that we had built um, after the launch, and then yeah. the rest of them were stock. Okay. Um, I've seen activity in both the chat and the Q&A, so people are very interested in the client portal idea. Um, is there any more you could say or talk about that process, yeah. how you're going through that? Um, what, what is the approach there? Yeah, I mean, so I don't mind announcing it was announced at LegalX. So uh, it's through a company called Vine Connect. Um, I believe the product is called Vine to Great. Uh, I believe piggybacked off of FileVine. Um, but it, I will say it is a client portal um, that uh, you will use a button on your website um, that is allowed to the client to go in through your website, uh, which would create some traffic through there, which is good. Um, but they will go in through there and they'll be directed to a, a separate page, which will have your firm's logo on it. Um, and that will look just like it's for your law firm. Um, no one would know the difference, but it will, they'll log in with their net, their first name, last name. And additionally, their cell phone number or the number they gave you upon uh, signing up with your firm. And then once signing in, they'll get a, it's a dual factor authentication. So they'll get a code. They didn't have to put that code in. Um, and then they'll be into their portal. Their portal uh, looks like on the, and I'll just kind of briefly describe it. On the left, it has the contact information for the case manager, attorney, paralegal, if there is one on the case. And even if you have a market operations person, maybe that fourth or third or fourth point of contact for them to really get in touch with. Um, we have been working with them. There is a way now to text into the file from that portal as well. Um, so it, it does bilateral communication in there. So if you respond back to that from Filevine in there, it does come back to there because um, our, you know, we deal with a lot of clients who lose phones and that's why we didn't go with an app. Um, we looked at an app opportunity and, you know, clients lose phones, they forget their logins, all these things that could go through. And um, we wanted to make sure that it was, uh, can, they could go to a website if they need to go to a website and get through. Um, it has very similar to, uh, if you ever ordered a pizza from Domino's or Papa John's, it's got a, uh, a pizza tracker type, type setup in it where they can see from the beginning of the case all the way to the end. And each one of those is a clickable field where they're able to see what that step means um, and be able to move through the process on where they are. So where they are will be at the top and it'll have that brief description. And then below we'll have the little, you know, buttons or tabs that they can click on to figure out what's next. Um, and you said, Josh, yeah, so, you guys were adding some custom touches with like videos, for example, yeah. um, to personalize the experience to your firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we're using uh, short codes for YouTube videos, um, to be able to, uh, to be able to kind of give that client the personal touch, right? Every every client wants to know, you know, who they hired and and what they who that what they sound like and all those things. And so, you know, again, we've we built a brand with Mike Costello, and and you know, again, we we have a motto: it's be nice and do what you say you're going to do. So the first thing we want to do is introduce the client to the firm. Um, and so we have short videos for that. And each part of the process, we have a brief description in those videos as well. On, what this part of the process means um, and what they should be doing, you know, to, to take care of themselves um, and, and not to danger their case going forward. So we have some of those little key factors in there along with descriptions. of Does, the, that. does that include like, um, for example, one thing I've seen a lot of firms try to pick up on doing a better job of is like social media advising for the clients. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually in, um, that's actually in our questionnaire on our intake form. It's uh, we ask if they have social media and then we have a, a social media advisement area that says like, Hey, just want to make sure that you don't do these things. Um, and so we, of course, you know, I think we've all ran into a client may have gone out on social media and done something on video right after the accident and, uh -huh. you know, it's damaged the case. And so, um, we've definitely seen that, ran into that as a firm, and, and we have that in there as well as, as built into that. Um, 
And the other, the other portion is it gives them their email address that's to their file in there um, so that they're able to use that as well. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's been a, we're in the process of finalizing the build. Um, it's a lot of customizable things in there that you can use. You know, say you don't have a paralegal in the case and you want to include, you know, somebody that's in market operations or somebody who's the receptionist for the office as your third point of contact. Um, you have the ability to add any team member that's in the file and file on to that case um, in the portal as well. We've got another question here, which is a, is a pretty good one for you, uh, especially to take. Um, so the question here is with QuickBooks data, are you combining that data in FileLine? Are you combining that in Periscope when it hits there? What does that look like or how does that um, play together with respect to the data so that you're matching up uh, the fiscal numbers you need uh, together with the case data from FileVine? Yeah, so we're so we built out in the insurance section of our FileVine, we built out some custom fields in there for, um, you know, uh, attorney fee, settlement amount, um, any of the, uh, you know, any of the reduction amounts, things like that. We built that out in the insurance field so that when we settle that case, it matches to the insurance that they're in. So that when we cross-reference that into Domo um, and Periscope, that we're pulling that data back in. Now, the other thing that we did is we cross, we made it a bilateral communication piece between QuickBooks, the fuel connector, and this particular field to be able to pass back the data once the case has settled, dispersed. So real-time attorney's fees showing up in the, in the actual case, you know, because sometimes there is a reduction in attorney's fees that has to be done, and that may not have been, you know, quoted on the front end, um, or when it's settled, it may have been a little higher, and our motto as a client always gets the most back, so we want to make sure that uh, in order to do that, we're having to take some reductions on attorney's fees sometimes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me ask you one more. This is, this is from somebody who's Definitely five line user. So they're asking, what are you guys using for the trigger uh, for the settlement phase? Are you using um, phase changes or a task flow trigger? What's what's the trigger that you guys use for that? Um, and when you're setting off those reports at 515 every day? Yep. So that is based on the, so it's based on the phase change, number one. So the phase change is the number one. And then the number two is it pulls the settlement amount in the insurance field where we did the custom build for the Domo Periscope uh, integration. So that's where we're able to pull both in. Okay. Um, I think uh, with that, we've probably gone through all the questions that we have in here today. Um, I know the, the team will follow up if there's anything uh, that we can answer in writing for anybody, but I wanna thank everybody for attending. And I really wanna thank Josh for taking the time uh, to share with us what, what he's been up to and what the firm has been up to. We really uh, appreciate that. And uh, it's very exciting what you guys have already accomplished and what you're moving toward, so. Yeah, I mean, we I can't thank everybody on this call enough. Uh, you know, of course, Kane, you know, uh, I think we've all had this dream of like how we're going to make this all work with uh, with Falvon and and you've you and your team have continued to answer our questions and and I think we've pushed each other back and forth as far as hey we've been able to do this or we've been able to do that and um, I know we communicate with the with the Falvon team a lot um, we have one of our team members that probably reaches out daily as far as tech issues or you know moving tech forward and. Um, you know, I, I can't thank you enough for, for helping us grow because uh, we probably, you know, would still be doing spreadsheets right now if it wasn't for that. <laughs> and, and I just want to say one last thing. It was nice that Donnie wrote in, which is that how, how large does our firm need to get to get its own Josh? Um, so compliments to you. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. I don't know that number. <laughs> I really wish I could tell you that. But, um, but no, I mean, it, again, it's been... Uh, it's been five years here and I've done, I, I joke around, like I've done every job in the firm in order to make this a reality with Falvon because I couldn't have built it without knowing what, what people do day in and day out. That's awesome. Excellent. So thanks to everybody for attending and um, everybody have a good one.